Hello there. However they try to spin this, the UK establishment uniparty will be aghast at the now reality of George Galloway and his sectarian nightmare entering their hallowed halls of Westminster. But I have this to say to our political classes. You brought this on yourselves and on the rest of us. Our Westminster elite can point fingers or navel gaze all they like. George Galloway has been sent to Westminster at the behest of a certain demographic coupled with those from the ideology of the far left. Because Galloway galvanised his core vote into action, a core vote that was ready and willing to respond due to obvious reasons. Whatever you think of Galloway and his opportunism, you have to admire his political acumen. And he and I are on the same page on a few things. He's a Brexiteer, for example, as well as rejecting the woke agenda. But we do differ over Gaza. But Galloway knew which buttons to press in Rochdale, as I'll come on to. While nothing anyone else could have done would ever get our traditional vote into the ballot box right now because everyone's fed up with the Tories and Labour had to ditch its own candidate at the last minute. But you do have to wonder at Reform UK's poor showing, don't you? Is Tice right about intimidation? And the first words out of Gaza George's mouth in his victory speech was that this result is for Gaza. Not the people of Rochdale. No, for the people of Gaza. So events abroad over which the UK has no real control are now dictating the result of UK by-elections. While the deputy leader of Galloway's Workers' Party, Chris Williamson, refused to condemn the Hamas attack on Israel on the 7th of October and claimed that Israel should have been expecting it. No wonder the Board of Deputies of British Jews has called Gaza George's election win as a dark day for the UK's Jewish community. And after this result, many pro-Palestine supporters and their woke lefty useful idiot supporters will be energised to replicate it elsewhere around the country. Now the Labour Party might well be thinking that Gaza George will have a short term in Rochdale until the general election in a few months' time, and then a grown-up decision will be made by the electorate to put their party back in its rightful place. Apart from being a bit arrogant, they might not yet have realised that Galloway is plotting to ensure the council elections on the 2nd of May this year follow his lead. And if he's successful, any councillors that support his view will be in place for four years, not just a few months. And remember, it's the local council that supplies most of your local services, not Westminster and definitely not your MP. Now you will all no doubt know by now that the Reform UK leader Richard Tice has claimed that intimidation and threats of violence had been used against his Reform UK candidate, Simon Danchuk, the party staff and their supporters. Totally out of place in our mature democracy. Mature except for postal votes, that is. But there are also other areas of concern. The turnout was 39.7%. That's 31,107 voters. But according to reports, some 23,000 of them were postal votes. That's nearly three quarters of voters. Three quarters by post. I've never heard it being that high before. And according to Nigel Farage talking on GB News, the story from the election count was that when some ballot boxes were opened, the votes in it were 95% for Galloway. Farage also hinted at activists following the postman down the street, 
to knock on doors afterwards and tell the occupant they were there to collect their postal vote and they wouldn't be leaving until they've got it and further hinted at the intimidation that could be used during such an encounter. Maybe true, maybe not. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that one. But there's also another issue, that of leaflets. Now, I'm not saying this is illegal or anything, and I've seen tricks like this pulled in other constituents. But Julia Hartley Brewer put out on X that you can fool some of the people all the time and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. Two leaflets sent by George Galloway to Rochdale voters living in different streets. And the tweet showed photos of two different election letters, each addressed to a home in different streets of Rochdale. Now, if these are genuine, then it shows a very callous and cynical approach to political advertising. Because one assumes from looking at them that they were designed to cater for two completely different demographics. One letter talked about believing in Britain, believing in men and women saying that they were made by God, and George saying that, unlike other politicians, he has no problem in defining what a woman is, as well as backing law and order and small businesses. All the stuff the average punter might want to hear. But the other letter made it quite clear in the heading that it was addressing a specific demographic that makes up 20 to 25% of the constituency. And this letter was peppered with phrases of Arabic, reference to Gaza and supporting Palestine. In that second letter, Galloway referred to the Labour leader Keir Starmer as a top Israel supporter and talked about toppling the hated as he put it, Labour leader. Now, the first letter could appeal to a Brit voter, and the second to someone whose interests lay well outside this country and in a place far, far away. But crucially, the Brit voter would probably not be aware of what Galloway was telling those other people in the same constituency and therefore would not realise how much of a danger to societal cohesion Galloway could be. Maybe if those Brits had seen that other leaflet, they would have been more inclined to turn out and vote against him. Who knows? And as an aside, I'll ask a question. If those letters, sent by post, were targeted by the street in the way they appear to be, does that indicate an integrated community or a segregated community? Just asking. Now Galloway won, but an independent candidate came second, not one of the established parties. Talk about a protest vote. While the party that you would think would be the protest vote, Reform UK, could only manage sixth place behind the Tories in third place, the non-Labour candidate in fourth and the Lib Dems in sixth. But with 6.3%, at least they saved their deposit. Now, in response to Richard Tice calling out dirty tricks during the election, Gaza George retorted that Tice had sent him a text asking him to stand for Reform UK. And Galloway said he'd publish it if Tice kept on setting out accusations of electoral interference. This little snippet did cause some concern amongst Reform UK supporters on Twitter, some questioning Tice's judgment and some even withdrawing their support. Tice needs to clarify. Now, at the last election in 2019, Labour and the Tories combined got 82.8% .8 of the vote, compared to the miserable 19.7% they got this time, while the Brexit Party, now Reform UK, came third with nearly twice as many votes as they got this time. This shows that one particular part of the community, that aforementioned 20 to 25 percent, felt strongly enough to vote, while the more traditionally minded saw no reason to vote, not even for the Reform UK disruptors, and they stayed at home.
Unless Richard Tice is right about the intimidation against his candidate and as a result maybe many voters saw that and felt intimidated enough not to vote. And I'm left wondering that if the Labour Party candidate had not been disowned, whether he would have won, maybe Gaza George would have beaten him too. Anyway, the upshot is that many people woke up this morning and are now worrying that Rochdale is showing us a snapshot of our future. And all because our weak, wet, woke politicians have spent the last four or maybe six decades either knowingly or gullibly stumbling down the political path that brought us here. The UK is in desperate need of a true political leader. Who do you think that should be? Please like, subscribe and comment below. And thank you for watching.